Hey everyone, Jamie here from TechnicalCafe.com. Welcome to your sixth CSS tutorial. In the previous tutorial, we talked about styling our web pages using external CSS, which is basically writing our CSS code in a separate file and then linking that file to an HTML document. That way everything is kept neater, it's more organized, and you don't have to worry about looking for CSS code within the actual HTML document. Um, it's also actually one of the preferred ways of writing CSS code, especially if you're working on larger projects because everything's separate and if you find an error or you want to change something you don't have to necessarily look through the web page. You can just go straight to your CSS code and uh, edit it there. However, there are a couple ways that you can actually write CSS internally uh, right within the HTML web page and maybe for smaller projects this could be more convenient or if you're just practicing. Um, but generally it's recommended that you use external CSS, especially when you're working on uh, larger projects. Um, but in this tutorial we're going to be talking about how to write internal CSS. Um, and it's very similar to using external CSS, it's just adding um, a set of tags to our web page. Um, we can also talk about how to do inline CSS, which is actually adding CSS code directly to our HTML tags. Um, but more on that later. So let's come over here and take a look at what we actually have here for our web page. I actually created two divs, um, which is what we see here. And by the way, there's no CSS in this right now at all. It's uh, all pure HTML. So we have one div um, that has a header one that says internal CSS styling, which is right here. And we also have a second div that just has some regular text in it. Uh, and that's right here. So uh, let's go about styling this now. So how are we going to style this? So what we're going to be doing is using the same exact CSS code that we used in our previous tutorials, uh, like selectors and stuff like that. We're just going to include it within a set of tags on our web page. Um, so if we actually come over here to our header, this is where we're going to be adding our set of tags. Um, so if we come over here and make some space, uh, we'll actually add our st tags in now, and we're going to be using the style tags. So we'll, we'll use style, and then we're going to close our style tag, and you're going to want to make sure that you have your closing and opening style tags, as all your CSS code is going to go between these two tags. Um, there's one more thing that we're going to add to our opening style tag, which is an attribute of type, and that's going to be equal to text slash CSS. So let's come down here. So between these two tags is where we're going to be writing our CSS code to style uh, this web page here. Real quickly though, let's just save this, come over here and refresh, and you'll notice that nothing's changed. However, our CSS code is now on the web page. Uh, there's just we just haven't added any yet. So let's come in here, and the first thing we're going to want to do just to make sure that we have everything set up right is we're just going to change the body, all of the text in the body. Uh, we'll change the color to red or something like that. So we'll use our our element selector of body, and we'll open up a code block. We'll come down and we'll indent and we'll say color colon red. So let's save that, come over here and we'll refresh. And you'll notice that all of the text within this uh, HTML web page turned red. So we know everything's working right. Um, so let's come down here and let's just delete that. So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually um, for this tutorial is we're going to style our two divs. So I had created the div with a class called header and that's where the header text is. And then this right here is where the, uh, just the regular text is. It's a div with an ID of text. So just like in our previous tutorial with the uh, external CSS and selectors, we're going to reference our uh, CSS or divs by uh, just typing in the selector or the um, class or ID name. So what we're going to do for the class is we're going to say dot header, and we're going to open up a code block. And um, you'll notice actually that which is a little bit different than external CSS. When we're writing it internally, unless we choose our language to be CSS, which is right here, you're not, you're not going to really notice um, that it's selecting headers and anything like that. It's not going to color code things like you're used, used to unless you switch over, um, which is then going to make your HTML look a little funky. So uh, let's go back to HTML. And you'll notice that this doesn't change color when you're selecting something. So just something to look out for. Um, so let's come over here and let's give our header a width we'll say 500 pixels, and we'll say 650. Uh, we'll give it a height, and we'll actually leave the height off. Um, we'll give it a border, so we'll say border, one pixel, solid, and we'll say black. So let's come over here and refresh. You notice that now we do have a nice uh, looking uh, header div, but it's not centered, so let's go in here and just add a margin. So for our margin, we're going to say margin, zero pixels, auto, and that's going to center it. And there we go. So now we have one div that's been properly styled and looks nice. Let's go ahead and do this to the second div. So to access this div, since it's not using a class selector, we're going to be using an ID selector. So we're going to just use a hash sign, pound sign, whatever you want to say, and we're going to reference the ID of it. So our, we, our div is called text. So let's just come over here, break down in the code block, and we're going to reference it like that. So let's come over here, 
And just to keep things more organized and uniform, we're going to give it also a width of 650 pixels. And we'll give it this a border of one pixel, uh, solid, or we'll say dashed, and we'll say green. And we're also going to center this div, so margin, zero pixels, auto. And if you don't know what most of the CSS means, uh, don't really worry about it. We're just learning right now how to write the code uh, within uh, our HTML document. So we'll get more into this stuff later on. So let's come over here and refresh. And you'll notice that now we do actually have two divs that have been styled nicely, um, but there's a little bit of, uh, they're a little bit too close. Let's go ahead and add a margin. Um, we can either add a margin to the bottom of the first div or the top of the second div. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to add it to the top one. So we're going to write another margin, which is going to override uh, anything that we've already said. And we're going to say margin top, and we're going to say, let's say 30 pixels. So this should theoretically space this out 30 pixels from here. So let's refresh. Oop. Say margin bottom. I was thinking the wrong thing. I was thinking the top of this div, but okay, let's refresh. There we go. So now everything's been spaced out. We're, we're good. Um, let's just give this div, div a width, or a height rather. And we'll say 500 pixels. So we'll save and refresh. And here's our div, uh, a little bit too big. We'll say 300, or 350. There we go. So now we have a div that takes up most of the page. This is like our main content area. Um, and we also have a uh, div up here that is our header. So uh, this is basically how we can go about writing in one type of internal uh, style sheets. So let's go ahead and learn another way to style our HTML web pages internally. Um, and this doesn't actually involve creating a style tag or anything like that. Um, it's actually called inline CSS, and it's used right within the HTML tag. So for example, let's say we want our header one tag, uh, which corresponds to this text right here. Let's say we want to change this text to blue. Uh, or red or whatever color you want. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're actually just going to come over to our code and right within the h1 tag or the tag of whatever you want to change um, we say style, we add a style attribute equals and then we put in some um, quotation marks and whatever we want to style it we'll actually put between these quotation marks. So let's say we want to change the color we'll say color colon and we'll say let's just say red. So we're actually going to terminate our line. So all of our CSS code is going to be right within these quotation marks. And it's written very similarly to how we would write it within uh, an external or internal CSS style sheet. Um, but it's just right in the line. And this is actually probably, I don't know, one of the least recommended ways of doing it, uh, even more so than including it within our web page like this, um, just because it actually adds confusion and stuff like that. So if you're go looking through a bunch of um, HTML web pages for the styling of something, you'd have to search through and it just adds more code and gets confusing. Uh, again, this is another reason why you would keep it in an external style sheet. So anyway, let's save, come over here and refresh, and you'll notice that we have our our text is red here. Uh, we can also change the text here. Let's just go ahead and do that. So let's add a paragraph around it first. So we can get just the text. And we'll say style for an attribute equals uh, similar to any other HTML attribute, and we're going to say, I uh, will say color colon blue. And you also include your semicolon and line terminator, uh, even though it might look wrong compared next to the uh, quotation marks or something like that. Uh, you're supposed to include everything, so let's just save, again we'll refresh, and here's our blue text, and it jumped down a little bit because we have paragraph spacing, but um, this is basically how you can go about styling your HTML using internal CSS, uh, either by adding the script or style tags rather within your web page here, um, or doing inline CSS, both of which aren't really the recommended way. Again, I'm just kind of trying to stress that. So it's better that you use uh, external CSS style sheets. And you'll notice that this adds a significant amount of code um, from line 5 all the way to line 21. Uh, so that's not something you're really going to want to have unless you're just doing like a really small project. Uh, and the same with this, this adds confusion, so you kind of lose what the code is. So just something that you should keep in mind. This is why external style sheets are recommended. Um, but if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please feel free to let me know. Uh, feel free to play around with the code that you've written, uh, the code that I've written, just, you know, just to get the hang of things. Uh, and again, please let me know if you want to see any other tutorials, stuff like that. And thanks for watching.